All right. WordCamp Portland, how are you all doing today? All right, perfect. Well, I am Ariel, and yes, it is like the Little Mermaid. Um, this is my presentation for today, Web Personalization, Why It Will Make or Break Your Business's Success. It's kind of dramatic, but that was kind of the point. <laughs> uh, so before I go ahead and get into this, I thought it would be fun to give a little background about who I am and what it is that I do. Um, so you'll notice Kermit the Frog and all that stuff. I'll get to that in a second, but first the boring stuff. So I am a freelance writer. If you, you know, read any of the top WordPress blogs, you might have you know, noticed me there. I, I often write on a lot of those. I work with a lot of startups and online entrepreneurs who are you know, looking for a copywriter to help with their conversion and find their voice online. And I'm also the social media manager at Duda Mobile. So there's the boring stuff. The fun stuff, you will notice Kermit the Frog with Mickey Mouse ears. That, I picked that on purpose. <laughs> uh, I love Disneyland. My family and I go very often. I know and love the Muppets. I can do the whole monologue <laughs> for Muppet Treasure Island. Um, <laughs> don't ask me to do it now. We don't have time for it, but you can tease me about it later. Uh, that five number is probably exactly what you guessed. I am vertically challenged, <laughs> uh, or as my mom likes to say, fun-sized. <laughs> and that last number there, that 8,946, that is the approximate amount of cups of coffee that I've drank in my lifetime. <laughs> I have two kids, so uh, I'm pretty sure that number is going to double here soon. Um, I'm on Twitter today, so you can connect with me there. But now on to the presentation. So before I got in, I just wanted to give everybody kind of a basic rundown of what it is that I'm going to be talking about today. So some examples of web personalization, why it's something that we should take seriously as site owners, how well that it works, like examples of people that have used it, um, and then how to actually you know, implement this idea on your own site. And if, you know, if you're a web designer or a freelancer, an agency, how you can use that on your client site. So on to the next slide. So <laughs> in case that uh, amount of cups of coffee before didn't kind of lead into it, uh, I love coffee. <laughs> I come, I'm born and raised in the Northwest. I come from a family of coffee drinkers. So it's really not that big of a surprise or a stretch to assume that I, too, love coffee coffee. Now, it's funny, Starbucks kind of has a big role in my life growing up. Uh, <laughs> for the most part, growing up here, Starbucks wasn't something that was around here often. So when the Starbucks in my neighborhood opened up, my family, we were there, like at the door, face pressed up against the glass, like we were waiting for Starbucks to open. Now, me, I'm a coffee snob, <laughs> so I find myself apologizing for it more often than I should. Um, but you know, you give me a shot of espresso over ice with some water, and I'm going to be happy. But my dad, <laughs> out of everybody in my family, my dad probably has the craziest drink, at least one of the craziest drinks I've ever heard of. His order, to this day, they call it the Bob. And it is a triple vinte soy, two pump chocolate with whipped mocha and cinnamon sprinkles on top. And it cannot be nutmeg or, you know, the world's going to fall apart. There's going to be hell to pay for that. Um, so I know what you're thinking. Like, why <laughs> am I talking about this? What does coffee have to do with personalization? And I get that. But actually, in, in concept, it has a lot to do with on what I'm going to be talking about today. As a business and a brand, Starbucks does personalization of its products really well. They wouldn't be as successful as they are if they didn't personalize the products to the people that are ordering it. What a lot of business owners and freelancers, people like us don't always understand or recognize, is that it's not just that morning cup of joe that people want. Uh, customized and, and fit to them. It's everything that they want. And that, in large part, has to do with the fact that technology is really grooming people to expect these experiences, especially when it comes to the internet. Now, that might sound like a bold statement that I'm making here, but when you think about it, like for yourself, it's, it's probably not that far of a stretch. How many here use Google for their primary search engine browser? Okay, so like almost literally everybody, okay. Well, 
if you were to type in Chinese food in the browser, Google would adapt the search results to show you Chinese food restaurants here in Portland, not New York, not China, like Portland. Why? Because that's what's relevant to you in your life right now. So it, it changes. Here's another example. Amazon. Now, within Amazon's website, you will notice sections sort of like this, where they will recommend things based off of what you've been looking at recently or what you've purchased, and it adapts to you as an individual on the site. Here's another example. Netflix. Um, Netflix will show you something that you might be interested in based off of what you've previously watched, and for each user, it changes, like what's on my user as opposed to my three-year-old son's account <laughs> is very different. Not too much because we both like to watch superhero stuff, but there, there's a difference there. So these are examples of personalized and adaptive experiences that we're used to online. Um, and, and we appreciate stuff like this because it does, it, it, changes, it changes to us. But before I got too much further into this presentation, there was one question that I thought if I was in the audience, this is something that I would want answered. Why in the world should you care? Like here's this little short person standing up here and I'm talking about something, why should you pay attention to me? And it's a, it's a good question to, to ask because you don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to waste your time. So I wanted to kind of go through a couple of things here to explain why this is something that's kind of important. So by a show of hands, how many people here have an online space, like a website, that you need for your business? Like it brings in income with leads or whatever. How many people? Okay, so there's quite a few of us. I'm one of those people. <laughs> so here's a couple statistics that you might find surprising. One study showed that almost 75% of online consumers would get irritated with a website when they would come to it and content would appear that had nothing to do with what they were interested in. And it, it could be subtle. And we've all been on those websites where there's pop-ups or there's an offer where it's like, oh, okay, that's interesting, but eh, that's not for me. I'm frustrated, okay, fine. Another study showed that 88% of these people all agreed that if they had a bad experience on a site kind of like this, they're not coming back. So let's just play this out, rainy day scenario. 88% of the traffic that comes to your site in a month, in a year, um, have a less than happy experience on your site. And they leave, and they never come back. That's 88% that's of your potential revenue. So that's your mortgage, your food on the table. If something like that keeps happening over a long period of time, you can pretty much guarantee that you're gonna be out of business. So, I mean, it, it's a big deal, really. The thing with web personalization is that it bridges the gap between just having a, a website for your business and then having a successful biz, business website. It's an asset to help your website work with you towards your end goal, which is ultimately to bring in money. And I, you know, I can say that, like, hey, that's a fancy thing to say, <laughs> but there's, there's proof to what it is that I'm talking about. Here's one example. You may know of this theme shop. I've had the pleasure of working with these people before. So my theme shop, they create and sell um, WordPress themes and WordPress plugins. Now, for them, when they implemented personalization on their site with a simple notification bar, they saw a 5% increase in conversion for them on their site. And 5% doesn't sound like a lot, um, but for them, this was more than 2,500 in revenue, in addition to you know what they usually make. So this is something that if they never did this one single test, they never would have seen that income. I talked before about Amazon. I thought this statistic was interesting. 35% of the revenue for Amazon comes from the recommendation engine. Now, last time that I checked. Amazon makes about $1,000 a second. I mean, wouldn't we like a slice of that pie? But that's, those are huge margins. That over the course of a year, 35% of that income, if they didn't have this, these sections within their sites that adapted, they would never see that, 
that income. So why is this something that we should care about? Well, web personalization, it, it does what we already want our site to do. It gives, um, it gives the people that come to our site a better experience. It helps build some loyalty, people like our brand. And at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's just plain good marketing. I mean, marketing is my bread and butter. But, um, you know, this, from the things that I showed before, I mean, this, this gets results. So there's why we should care. So then the next part in all of this would be actually doing it. Like, okay, great, Ariel, you talked about stuff, but like, how do I, how do, I do that? Um, and I didn't want to go too far in um, to being too technical with stuff. I wanted to give something that was simple and actionable that anybody who ran their own sites or they worked with an agency um, with, on a team that they would want to be able to take away something and do this. And th the easiest way that I came up with was this right here, personalized calls to action. So this, I mean, calls to action online take a lot of shapes and forms. The two that I'm going to be talking about here are a notification bar and a pop-up. Um, and I know what you're thinking about pop-ups. They're on every site. They're so irritating. I always click out. I hate them. Oh, like, I, I get that. Um, but that's usually because the people that use them, they don't use them in a way that adds to the site. Um, but when you do web personalization, um, it, it really does, and it helps. So here's an example. So we're going to take a notification bar and a pop-up, and we're going to customize um, both of these based on the referral link. So based off of the traffic, like where the traffic is coming from. So let's say we have two people. We have uh, Mustache Joe and Hipster Mary. And they are going to go to, they're looking to go to an Italian restaurant here in Portland. So here we have Hipster Mary. She comes, is a Facebook follower, she comes to this homepage for this website from Facebook. This is the notification bar that she sees. We love our Facebook followers. Here's an appetizer on the house, claim it here. She clicks over to the reservation um, page. She reserves it, she claims her appetizer, and um, everybody's happy. The restaurant reserves a table and has income. She gets something that she would have probably already paid for. Um, but they're building you know, a relationship there. It's warm. It's recognizing where it is that she's actually coming from. <coughs> Mustache Joe. He is not a Facebook follower. He doesn't come to the site from there. Instead, he comes from Yelp. And when he comes to the same home page, this is what is triggered for him to look at. Yelp exclusive, reserve a table, get two glasses of wine, reserve here, it takes them to the same reservation page. He reserves and same thing. So these might not sound like a big deal, but really at the end of the day, when you recognize this, this is just a little mental hack that people are like, oh, hey, you knew, and oh, wow, thank you, and okay, great. And the restaurant gets to make uh, some money for the night, hopefully build a customer from there on out. So there's, there's an example of web personalization in action. So actually doing this can be really difficult if you don't use a plugin. Like you need a front end developer and a back end developer and a whole bunch of coding and just it's gonna be a headache. So thankfully, thanks to our awesome WordPress community, we have quite a few plugins that can help you do something like this and do a lot more when it comes to website personalization. So here's just a few, just to give you an example. My theme shop has a notification bar, Thrive Leads does pop-ups really well, that's easy. Insight by Duda has a lot of trigger systems. Um, there's Hello Bar and Sumo Me, depending on you know what it is that you're, what you like. I can't really go into you know how each of these work. I don't have enough time. Um, so it's kind of up to you to do your own due diligence with, with all of these ones. And you can ask me afterwards if you have questions about something or some of these in web personalization. But before I wrapped up my part, and I'll have the links to these at the end on the last slide too, so don't worry about that. I, I thought it would be good to ask this question. So okay, we, we talked about web personalization. Um, we talked about why it's important. Here's an example. But like, what can you do with this? So if you're um, a website ad admin, you control your own site. Like it's, it's gonna be up to you to kind of test out some plugins, test out some triggers, figure out 
what is working and, and what isn't. But if you're a freelance designer, if you're a developer, how can you use web personalization to your advantage? And so I thought I would just take a couple minutes and talk about you know, an example of what you could do. Now, when I was doing web design back in the day, when I was first starting out with WordPress, one of the biggest problems that would come up is like, OK, well, here's what I would charge. And someone would always volley back with, well, that's huge. I can pay someone else $250 to build me a website. I'm like, OK, well, that's fine. You can pay somebody to do that. But for me, I create websites that help um, my clients actually gain revenue. And here's some examples of how I can do that using website personalization. Here's how you can push you know, leads down your sales funnel. You can, you can package this however you want. Uh, you can use it as an upsell tactic to kind of make you stand out from everybody else. But that's really just a quick example of what it is that you can do with something like this if you find the time to learn a little bit about web personalization and all of its facets and all that fun stuff. So that is my presentation. There are the um, URLs to the things that I talked about before. And yeah, I'm going to get off stage now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, does anybody have any questions? I'm not sure how much time I have left, but. Okay, I've got a minute. Any questions? Oh, okay, yes. Um, there's one with Sumo Me that it pops up at the bottom and it can scroll with your site and it doesn't um, take up the entire screen and be annoying. So it's kind of there. Um, the notification bar is nice because it kind of, it stays there and it's there from the moment that someone comes onto the site. Um, and you can have that where, you know, it's someone fills out an email or a phone number or something too. So it's not, it's not too distracting, but if they're interested, it's there for, for that purpose. Any other questions or? Okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so she's wondering if you know there's a fine line between um, you know following somebody online and saying something, so you don't want to be a troll. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, so regarding regarding using tracking cookies, if it's it's not so much a, a cookie the way that a lot of these uh, plugins will work. If it's something like you feel um, is worth talking about, you can put it on your pages policy or something like another load notification bar. Um, it's kind of up to you. I mean, there's there's a lot of examples that you can do with this, but a lot of people, when it comes to an example like that, they it doesn't even equate in their mind that you know something like that is happening. All right, thank you. Thanks Ariel.